We have spent time looking for and selecting articles. Now we have to determine if what we find is actually worth keeping and including in our research. It sometimes comes as a surprise to students and professionals that even peer-reviewed articles can be done poorly, and that's not even getting into all the research that's not peer-reviewed. That is why appraisal is an essential step in any evidence-based process. There is a lot to take into account when reading an article bias, poor methodology, and even outright fabrication and fraud. Learning to critically appraise articles can help you recognize the good from the less than good. And appraising is doing more than just finding if the article is well researched and written. You want to determine if it's useful for what you need. It may be a stellar piece of research, but if it doesn't help you, it's not worth hanging on to. This is how many of those new to the appraisal process react, me included. Out of every step of the evidence-based practice process, critical appraisal seems to inspire the most anxiety and self-doubt. I understand, as I don't have a PhD, I'm not a biostatistician, and I'm not an expert researcher, so how am I supposed to be able to figure out if these articles are good ones or not? Thankfully for us novice researchers, there are tools out there that can help guide us along in the appraisal process. We are not the first to feel overwhelmed at the idea of appraising research articles. This is so common, in fact, that tools have been created to hold our hand and help us through the process. These are collectively known as critical appraisal checklists, and they are so very helpful. Many break down each part of the appraisal process by prompting you to look for certain information. There are a lot of different versions. You'll be using the Critical Appraisal Skills Program out of the UK, also known as CASP. They have user-friendly worksheets that make the appraisal interesting. No, really. Most appraisal checklists are organized by the type of study, as you need to ask different questions depending on if the article is a systematic review or qualitative study or whatever. This is the table from your reading on Moodle, and it lists the main study types, plus where they are on the evidence hierarchy, and it has a brief description of each. So, how do you know what study type your article is? Usually you can find this in the title, in the abstract, or in the method section of each article. At some point in your education or professional career, you are going to have to write a literature review. This may be for a thesis, a dissertation, or if you're writing a paper for publication. It's important to know that a literature review is not just a summary of the articles on a particular topic. A well-done literature review compares and contrasts the articles. It synthesizes the information to try and make sense of what's out there. This can be overwhelming, but creating what's called a literature matrix can make the process so much easier. This can be just a table in Word or Excel that has the pertinent information from each source. And, like the critical appraisal checklist, a well-done matrix can help you evaluate what you find. And this isn't just an exercise for students. You will see matrices pretty frequently in the nursing and medical literature. Journals like these mainly because it makes it easier for the author and readers to understand and view the characteristics of each study. You will see that the criteria will vary widely. It just depends on what each author considers to be important. Dr. Neal has created this very thorough matrix for you to use. You will enter the article title information on the left and then fill in the required information for each article. Here is my example. My topics on the use of the teach-back method, specifically to improve adherence to treatment guidelines in patients with heart failure. This article here is a great match for me. So I read through the abstract and the entire article and I filled my matrix as I did so. The power of the matrix really shows up when you have information on a list of articles because it makes it so easy to go down the columns and compare and contrast each study. Sometimes you can find all you need for the matrix right in the abstract. Of course, that doesn't mean you get to skip reading the whole article. Some of the most interesting details get left out of the abstracts. This particular abstract is quite detailed, so I'll show you where I found what I needed for the matrix. The purpose is almost always stated towards the top. The independent variable is something that's controlled or manipulated by the researcher. In this case, it's performing the teach-back education method with heart failure patients. The dependent variable is what is measured by the researcher. For this article, they're looking at information retention and hospital readmission rates. The number of subjects is usually pretty easy to find. More subjects is generally better. Also look for the dropout rate. In other words, 
How many of the subjects were not included at the end of the study, either due to death, refusal to participate, or could not be contacted? The abstract may also give basics about the subject characteristics, but you'll want to look in the body of the article for more details. The study design is almost always listed in the abstract or even in the title, especially if it's a systematic review or a randomized control trial. A description of the study instruments may appear in the abstract, but you'll find it more often listed in the methods section. These researchers use their own questionnaire. Sometimes you'll have to dig for the time period, but this abstract helpfully lists it right here. Use the comments for whatever you feel will be helpful, the main findings, the limitations of an article, or even something you found surprising or interesting. Between the critical appraisal checklist and the literature matrix, you are going to be well on your way to becoming competent and comfortable with analyzing articles and other resources. Congratulations! If you have any questions about finding information via the library, let me know. Your questions don't have to be just about the content I covered here. Remember, I am your librarian. I want to hear from you. If you don't ask me for help, I get sad and I start asking myself what's my purpose and why am I here. Don't make me have an existential crisis. Contact me if you need help.